This lesson is going to focus on the global settings for the Beaver Builder plugin. Now to edit the global settings of the Beaver Builder plugin, you want to go to the front end of your website and then up the top you want to click on Page Builder. When the Page Builder loads, the top bar up the top here on the right hand side, you'll see a button that says Tools. So let's click on that and you'll see a couple of options here that we're going to go through later on in this course. What we're concerned with for this lesson is the global settings. So let's click on that. Now you can see the global settings opens up a modal and there's three different tabs. So there's the general tab with a couple of settings that we're about to go through. Then there's a CSS tab, which is a code editor. And then there's the JavaScript tab, which like the CSS is a code editor. So let's go back to the general tab and we'll go through these settings one by one. Now, the first thing to note, these settings apply to all posts and pages. And the first setting that applies to all posts and pages is the default page heading. So for this video, I've changed themes because in the previous videos, we're using the Beaver Builder theme and that acts slightly different here because the Beaver Builder team have preempted a couple of settings and made it a little bit more integrated with the global settings. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you here, this is the default 2016 theme for WordPress. I'm gonna show you these settings, and then at the end, I'm gonna activate the Beaver Builder theme and just show you guys a slight difference that happens when you do use the Beaver Builder theme. Okay, so the first thing that we're concerned with here is this first setting, which is the default page heading. So I'll just drag this over here so we can see what we're doing. So the name of our page is Homepage, and this is output using a PHP tag in our themes files. Now, if you don't know what that means, basically our theme is outputting this by default. So whenever we create a new page, the title of the page automatically gets displayed here in a H1 tag. And in the global Beaver Builder settings, you can set this to yes so that it does show. But if we hover over this, it says, choosing no will hide the default theme heading for the page post type. You will also be required to add some basic CSS for this to work if you choose no. So what this setting is in regards to is, the title of the page over here, more than likely we're gonna to wanna to hide that because we'll be adding it using Beaver Builder and the drag and drop capabilities that it offers so that we can style it, maybe put a background image behind it. You can just do a lot more when you add it using the Beaver Builder page builder. But we're not gonna to wanna to have two of them. We're not gonna to wanna to show this one by default and then add another one using Beaver Builder that we can style. So we're gonna to wanna to hide this one and then have one that we add here. So if we change this to no, so show the default page heading no and click save. You can see that it still shows and that's because we haven't added a CSS class. Now to do this, you have to go through the code. So just follow along. You don't have to be a developer to be able to do this. So you wanna right click and then you wanna to go to inspect. And this might be a little bit different based on the browser that you're using. If you're using Firefox, you go into Firebug and then we wanna find the element that contains our heading. And you can see as I hover, it's this one here. So the header tag. So class equals entry hyphen header. I wanna copy that class and we'll just close that. And then we'll go back into the global settings. So tools, global settings. And we wanna put that into here. So we wanna do dot for a CSS class and then the entry hyphen header, which is that container that contains our heading that our theme outputs. And then we'll click save. And now that's hidden. And because it's on our global settings and global settings apply to every page on our website, that means that every time we create a new page, that heading will not show. Now, if you're not using the Beaver Builder theme, there's something very important that you need to be mindful of when you use that hide page title setting. Now, not to get too developer right now, but if we right click and then go to inspect to view the page code, if we find the HTML element that contains our page title that our theme's outputting, so there it is there, H1, so it's a HTML H1 element. That's the page title that we're hiding. And then this is the container that contains that H1. And that is what we added just then into the global settings. So if we go to tools and then global settings, do not show the HTML element with the CSS class entry hyphen header, which is this one here. 
And if we look at the CSS applied to this element, you can see display none. Now, if you're not familiar what this does in CSS, it means that it should not show. So if we uncheck this, you can see that over here it's shown again. And if we apply this display none again, it hides. So the key takeaway of this is even if you choose not to show this page title using the global settings here in Beaver Builder, that H1 title that your theme outputs is still in the code on the page. And this is very important for search engines like Google because they only want one H1 element on the page. And what I'm getting at here is if we close this code editor and then close the global settings, because we now know that that H1 element is still here, when we do go to add our own custom page title to a page, so let's just say we do that right now by going to add content and we'll drag a heading module into the page and we'll give it a, a title. And then under the style tab in the heading module in Beaver Builder, you can select the HTML tag. So if we click that, you do have the option for a H1, but we don't want to select H1 because our theme is outputting that H1 tag that we're hiding using the global settings. So as long as your theme is outputting a H1 tag, make sure your custom heading element is a H2. That's very important. I'll leave that right there. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna quickly change themes from this default 2016 theme, and I'm gonna activate the Beaver Builder theme, and I'm gonna show you guys how this page title setting is a little bit different when using the Beaver Builder theme. So I'm just gonna jump in now and do that. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and activated the Beaver Builder theme. And if we go back into the global settings, so I'll just launch Beaver Builder and then I'll go to tools and then global settings. And the first thing to note is that I have not changed any of these global settings. So all I did was just change from the default 2016 theme over to the Beaver Builder theme. And already you'll notice that the page title up here is not showing. And that's because of this setting here, show no. So do not show the page heading. And this is interesting and something that I want to point out is that the CSS selector is selecting the dot entry hyphen header, which we entered when we're using the 2016 theme. This doesn't actually exist in the Beaver Builder theme. So we can actually get rid of that and click save. And still the page title does not show up here. And that's because the Beaver Builder theme integrates a little bit better with Beaver Builder. And it makes sense. I mean, the same developers are making both products so they can preempt a couple of things. This setting here in the global settings, it checks for this. So when this is set to no, it actually doesn't even output the HTML code for the page title. And therefore you don't need to add a CSS selector to hide that element. And we can confirm this because we're not even adding a CSS selector in here. And if we click save, and then if we inspect the code to look for the page title code, so we're looking for that H1 tag, you can see that there is no H1 tag anywhere here, but if we go back into tools and then global settings and we select this to yes, and then we click save and then refresh the page, you can see that it is outputting it here. And if we inspect element, that is our H1 element here. So just to summarize what we've learned for this global setting, if we go back into tools and global setting, is that if you choose not to show the page heading and you have the Beaver Builder theme activated, it actually does not output this H1 element at all. And that means you could actually drag in a heading element here and make it the H1 element. But if you're using another theme that isn't the Beaver Builder theme, when you select not to show the heading, you need to add the CSS class of the element that contains your page title, so your H1 tag, into the box here but that H1 element is still output on the page, so you wanna use a H2. So that's one of the examples throughout this course that we'll find where the Beaver Builder theme does integrate with the Beaver Builder page builder just a little bit more than third-party products. But not to worry, I just thought I'd point that out because I have seen a lot of people struggle with what, understanding what this setting does and just going through this tutorial, you've mastered this setting and you're not gonna run the risk of having two H1 tags on the page and jeopardizing your SEO for search engines like Google. All right, so that's enough on this setting. Let's go on to the next one. And the next one we're gonna go on to is the global row settings. So the next settings we're gonna be talking about is the global settings for rows. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and created a row here, which has the gray background. And then inside that are three columns that have the different colors here. So the first one red, 
then blue, and then pink. So let's go ahead and go back into the global settings. So tools, global settings. And there's the settings that we're gonna be looking at now. So the first thing I want you to notice is that the margins on rows are set to zero. And we can confirm that these are set to zero because these two rows here, so the one with the gray background and the one above it with the blue, are touching. And also the gray and the blue one beneath are touching. And also notice that the rows extend to the left and the right of our browser. So there's no spacing anywhere around our rows. So let's go ahead and exaggerate this and I'll add 100 pixels margins around our rows. And remember, because these are global settings, they're gonna to apply to every row that we've added to our page using Beaver Builder. So I'll add 100 pixels there and I'm gonna click save and notice what happens. So there's our row and all the way around our row, there's 100 pixels of margin and above it, this row here, 100 pixels. So you can see there's a major downside to adding margins to rows and that's that they can't touch each other. So the white here that we're seeing now is actually the background color of our page. And then on top of our page is sitting our rows and they're being pushed apart by those margins. So for a black and white answer, a nice tip for you guys, always leave the global row value for your margins as zero. Because if you wanna space out your rows, there's a better way to do it and that's using padding. And what we're gonna do, we're going to set our margins around all our rows to zero. So I'll save that. And now you can see they've gone back to touching, they're extending the full width of the page. So let's go back and go to tools and then global settings. And let's add 200 pixels padding to our rows. Now that's an exaggeration again, you would not use that generally, but let's just go ahead and click save and see what happens. So as you can see, our rows are now spaced apart. So similar to what happened to the margins, except our rows still touch each other and they still extend to the sides of the pages. And this is generally the effect that you're going to want to achieve. And that's the difference between margins and padding. Margins push the elements away and the background colors and images on the rows don't extend to the full width. Where padding, your rows can still touch each other, but you're just pushing the space around the content within the row. And that's usually what you'll wanna be using. So back into the global settings, I'll give you guys a couple of tips for these. Always keep your margins at zero. And if you ever have to change this value from zero to sign kills, you probably know what you're doing. I personally have never had to change that from zero. And for padding, padding could be set from anywhere between 20 or 30 pixels all the way up to 100 or 150 pixels, 200. It really depends on your design. 200 pixels would be for the more spaced out designs. But again, I just wanna remind you, there's no right or wrong answer for this padding value or the margins value, but I do recommend margin stay at zero and padding. Play around with your design and make sure you test it on mobiles and tablets and desktops to make sure it is giving you that spacing that you're wanting for your design. Okay, so let's go back into our global settings and we're just gonna go through the next couple. So the next one under our rows is the max width for rows. So when we add a row, this is the maximum width that a row can be. Under that is the default row width, which is how wide the rows are when you add them in. And then inside those rows that you add in, is the content gonna be full width or fixed width? So we're gonna tackle all these three together because they are interrelated. And these are the settings we're gonna start off with first. So when we add a new row, so when we click on add content over here and we drag in a new row, our default row width will be full width, so it'll go to the left and the right. And the content within that will go full width as well, so that will go to the left and the right. Now just keep in mind that our rows have a padding of 90 pixels around, so when our content does go full width, there's still gonna be a 90 pixel gap over here because of the padding on the row. If we set that to zero, then the edges of our content will go all the way to the edges, and the row inside would be like that. So let's just go ahead and click save. And a great module to show you guys how this all works is the map module. So let's go ahead and click add content. And then under advanced modules, let's drag in the map module. And I'm just gonna type in Vancouver because that's where I am now. And we're gonna click save. And now that we've added that, let's just add a background color to the row so we can see what we're doing. So we'll click on the wrench. We'll go down to background type and we wanna do color. 
And then for the color, we want to add maybe a nice gray so we can see what we're doing. So we're going to go back into the global settings and I'm just going to run you through what we have here and why it is so. So when we added that row into this page, the default row width is set to full width. So that's why our row with a gray background stretches all the way to the left and all the way to the right. The default row content width within that, so when we add content into that row, is going to be full width. And that's why our map stretches outside the grid. So here's our grid and the map's going outside of this. Now the reason it's not going all the way to the left and all the way to the right is because we have the padding on the row. So if we did go ahead and set that to zero and click save, you'll see that now our map's extended even further out. And the only reason this map isn't going all the way to the left and the right and the tops and the bottom of our row is because the module itself has a margin. And we're gonna discuss that in a later video, so I won't go into that right now. So that's what the default row width set to full width does. When you add a row, it goes all the way to the left and the right. And the default row content width, when that's set to full width, whenever you add content into a row, it goes all the way to the left and the right of that row. But keep in mind, it might not go all the way to the edges because you might have some padding on the row. So what happens if we change the default row content width to fixed width? So let's just go ahead and click save and see what happens. Nothing happens. So that's a point that I wanna make. So when you do set the settings up here in the global settings for your rows, so these settings here, this is the default, but once you add a row in, so you go into here and you drag a row, it uses those default settings to add the settings for this row, but when you go back and change them in the global settings, it only changes those settings for rows that you add after the fact. So because we had added this row with the content set to full width, even though under the global settings here, we change it to fixed width now, it still remains full width. And we can check that by clicking the row settings icon, the wrench, and it says here, content width, full width. So that's just like I wanna point out, this, if you do drag rows into here and then you go in and edit the global setting, it doesn't actually update the rows that are already on the pages, it only updates rows that you add after you've changed that setting. So now that we've set this row content width to fixed width, and we've left our default row to full width, let's see what happens. So let's do the exact same thing that we just did. So let's add one row, and we're gonna add this underneath so we can compare. And then let's go ahead and give this a background color. Maybe a dark gray. I'll click save. And then just like last time, let's add a map module. Drag that in. So that's a Vancouver and we'll click save. And that's a difference. So the only setting that we just changed in the global settings is this default row content width to fixed width. So because it's a fixed width, it stays within the grid and it doesn't stretch all the way to the edges of the row. Let's go back in to the global settings. And let's see what the default row width does. So right now that's set to full width. So every time we drag a row, it extends all the way to the left and all the way to the right. And we've just seen that happen when we dragged in this row here and then this row here. And we can tell because the backgrounds of both these rows go all the way to the left and the right of our browser. But let's go ahead and let's set this to fixed. So the default row width, when we drag in a row, it's gonna be fixed. So let's click save. And again, just note that even though we set the default row width to be fixed, the existing rows that we have on our pages do not get updated, only after the fact. So let's go down and we'll create one more row with one column and we'll drag that under this one. And then let's give this row a background color and we'll make this a nice blue and we'll click save. So immediately, that is the difference. So before when we're dragging in rows, I'll go to the left and the right and we could add a background color. 
and you can tell the background color goes all the way to the edges of our browser. But when we've gone into here to the global settings and we set the default row width to be fixed, it brings the edges of the rows into the grid and they can't extend outwards. And that brings us on to the last global setting for rows, which is max width. So currently this is set to 1080 pixels. And because the default row width is set to fixed, this here is actually 1080 pixels wide. So anytime we add a new row with these settings, they can only stretch to 1080 pixels wide. And you'll notice that when we set the default row width to fixed width, this setting here removes itself because this is setting the content to fix. So if we're setting the row to fix, then the content's gonna be fixed by default. So that's why when you set it to fix, that hides. So we've just seen that when the default row width is set to fixed, like we had here, then the maximum width that row can be is 1080 pixels wide. So this here is 1080 pixels wide. The last thing we need to look at is what happens if we set the default row width to full width and then the default row content width is fixed. How does the 1080 pixels affect a full width row? And the answer is this value here is the width of the content. So the default row will stretch to the left and the right. So we can add our background and it goes to the left and the right of the browser. But the actual content within that row will go 1080 pixels wide. And what I've just explained is exactly what was happening when we dragged in this row here. So the default row width was set to full. So when we dragged that row in, it went all the way to the left and the right. And the content inside that was set to fixed. So it went into the grid. And the width of that content within that full width row is 1080 pixels wide. So that's all you need to know about the global settings for rows in Beaver Builder. And the last setting we're gonna go through in this video for the global settings in Beaver Builder is the modules margins. So the responsive layout section down here, I'm gonna to leave to a whole separate video because I wanna dedicate a whole module to going through really in depth the responsive layout and responsive options that you can set in Beaver Builder. So we're gonna end this video now with this modules margin setting. And it's very simple. This is when you drag a new module into your page, this is the left and right and top and bottom. So all four sides of the module how much margin in pixels a module will get. And different to the row settings that we saw up here where when we change these settings, it doesn't apply to rows that we've already added into our pages. This setting does apply after the fact. So what that means is if we cancel out of this and I click on this map module here, in the advanced tab, by default, we can see that this module has 30 pixels top, bottom, left, and right. And it's grayed out, it's a placeholder. You can obviously override this if I was to enter a value here, I would overwrite that default. But that 30 pixel value here is actually coming from this box here, which is the global settings, margins on modules. So say I set that to 60 pixels and I click save. You will notice that this module here now has 60 pixels around it. So it's doubled. Now if I click on this and see how it's updated to the 60 pixel margin value that we just set in the global settings, let's just say the top and the bottom I do change. So I set that to 100 and then this 100. So I've obviously exaggerated that so we can see what we're doing, but the default as shown using a placeholder is still that 60. So if you think of this in terms of a hierarchy, Whatever you set in the tools, global options for the margin on modules gets applied by default, but you can come in here on a per module basis and overwrite it. So if I save that and then go to tools and global settings, if I set the margin module, the default value to be zero and click save, if I go back into this module now, and then the advanced tab, I can see the default, which is a placeholder over here, has been set to zero. But when I made that change in the global settings, it did not overwrite the margin on the top and bottom that I had set for this module previously. So the margins that you do set on a module overwrite the ones that you set in the global settings.
Now, a tip, if we go back into here, if we go down to that margin value again, say we do set that to 60 and we click save, something that we're going to talk about later on in those responsive lessons is those margins actually get carried across to mobile and desktop views. So as we come back in, you can see there's 60 pixels still. And on a mobile phone, that's going to cause the content to be quite narrow. So that's one thing that we're going to discuss later on. But just keep in mind that you don't want to use really large values for the margins on modules because they do affect the content width on mobiles. For me personally, I set this value at 20 so that when I do save that and bring the content in for mobile devices, content is quite wide because the margins on the sides are only 20 pixels. So for me personally, a tip is just to set these global margins on modules at either 20 or 30 pixels. So that's it for this lesson. I know we covered a lot of information in this video, but it was necessary and it is all very powerful stuff in each setting does change the design and how Beaver Builder works significantly. So make sure you watch this video two or three times, as many times as you need to really understand how it all works because learning these really are going to boost your designs and your websites to the next level. That's it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.